Hi, and welcome to this special event, the 2021 Professional Leadership Program for Women graduation, where we are celebrating the completion of 45 women in our cohorts this year. I'd like to start by acknowledging the support of our wonderful sponsors who are so committed to the mission of this program, to supporting women who are seeking to advance their leadership skills and to the communities in which we all live. Thank you so much. I would also like to give you a little glimpse behind the scenes of how we organized the program this year in a 100% virtual environment with an eye to maximizing the value for each participant. We started out with a flipped classroom concept where we pre-recorded videos of the major content and each woman was able to see that before each session. Then when we came together in the live sessions on Zoom, we were able to spend all of our precious time in conversation with each other, both in large groups and in small breakout groups. We also increased our one-to-one -one coaching opportunities for women, and we created cohorts that were much smaller so that we had a maximum of 12 women in each cohort, so every single woman could see each other on the screen all the time. And this really helped us to stay connected. We also um, introduced accountability partners for the first time. And this has been a big hit this year. From the very beginning of the program, each woman paired up with another participant and they met each week during the program to talk about how to um, make practical application of what we had been discussing in the session and to commit to each other that they would move forward in applying these things in their workplace. And finally, we expanded our networking events, all of them virtual except for one. We did all kinds of fun things together over Zoom. And we did manage in a socially distanced way to have a live golf experience at Pine Ridge Golf Course. And so this has been a way to reimagine the program in this time and still give a lot of support um, for leadership development for each of the women who came through. And you'll hear more about that a little bit later from our women themselves. Now I'd like to introduce to you the president of Towson University, Dr. Kim Schatzel, who has been a wonderful champion for our program. And we um, really enjoy her sharing her insights with us. This year, she came on session five and talked to us about leading with communication in times of crisis. And it was pretty insightful. Tonight, she comes back again to celebrate with us and it is my pleasure to introduce to you, Dr. Kim Schatzel. Hello, and welcome to Towson University for this exciting event to recognize and celebrate this latest cohort of brilliant leaders to successfully complete our professional leadership program for women. Towson University prides itself on being an institution providing national leadership for the public good. And this program, well, is proof of that impact in action. I'm proud to note that 25% of the program's graduates are TU alums, but after today, everyone can call themselves a proud Towson University Tiger. In talking to CEOs and other C-suite executives, I can share that all agree that never has leadership development been more imperative for organizational success than now. Personally, I was often the first and often the only woman in positions I held throughout my career. When I came to TU as president in 2016, I felt a bond with Sarah Richmond. She was a member of TU's first class in 1866, a member of the first graduating class, the fourth president of TU, and the first woman president as well. President Richmond was responsible for moving TU from its campus in downtown Baltimore and built iconic Stevens Hall as part of establishing the campus that we see today. And she did it all before women had the right to vote in the US. Truly an amazing woman. I hope she inspires you as she does me. 
I'm thankful for all of you being part of this year's cohort and offering your talents and perspectives to the program and your colleagues. I know you will come away with an increased capacity for leadership and new connections with all your fellow participants. Be proud that you made the right decision to invest in yourself and your development as a leader. Take what you've learned here and put it to work for yourselves, your organizations, and society. Make a difference wherever you go. Because of leaders like you, there's much to be proud of at Towson University and working together, there are truly great things ahead. Thank you, Dr. Schatzel. Next, I'd like to introduce to you four speakers, one from each of the cohorts from this year's program. They will share with you a glimpse behind the program curtain and share some program highlights with you. First, April Smith from the Tuesday morning session and Sierra Parks from the Tuesday afternoon session. Take it away, ladies. Welcome to our PLPW tour. I'm April Smith, along with my co-host, Sierra Parks. Thank you for joining us. During the last 10 weeks, there have been countless connections made and lessons learned. We now know how to unmute our mics before we speak, utilize Zoom reactions, and the usefulness of breakout rooms. But more importantly, we've learned a thing or two about ourselves as leaders and even golfers. Absolutely. After a year like 2020, your support system and leadership skills proved to be more crucial than ever. Our cohort faced a unique set of challenges with a pandemic happening right after its start. But that did not diminish the value, experience, or benefits of the program. I agree, Sierra. With each week of readings, videos, and journaling, we've had the opportunity to reflect on our values, passions, goals, and strengths in a way that truly reflects the leader we want to be every day. Things like being true to yourself, persistence, resilience, and value-based leadership were woven into each session. I couldn't have said it better. The first stop on our leadership journey came with us being able to see our leadership qualities regardless of our titles. Being authentic and recognizing leadership is not one size fits all was a turning point for us. Leadership is not a journey that ends, but one that persists throughout our entire lives. There is always something new to learn and someone new to learn from. From there, we've taken with us so many tools to add to our toolbox. The toolkit and dedicated time to focus on our leadership skills are unmatched. The ability to articulate our leadership styles and understand how we can lead within our organizations and drive culture is invaluable. That's right, Sierra. We've gained confidence to face our daily work challenges and have internalized the statement, full control is a state. Feeling in control is your choice. We've been challenged to be relentless towards progress as well. We also learned to create collaborative approaches to our work. And ultimately, we now know not to choose what is most comfortable, but choose what is the best path for us. Going through the program with such an amazing set of women is an experience I would not trade for anything. The PWLP program acted as the SWOT analysis for our leadership skills and allowed us to better understand how we can confidently add value to any team. As we continue on our leadership tour, we always strive to show up fully and shy away from shrinking. And we now know to bend at our knees while taking a swing. Thank you, April and Sierra. That was fun. Next, we have Sarah Mickey from the Wednesday morning cohort and Heather Sorensen from the Wednesday afternoon cohort. Ladies. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Mursky Mickey, 2020 Wednesday and 2021 Wednesday morning cohort speaker. I wanted to share a few words about what Kathleen and the Professional Leadership Program for Women has done for all of us. And most importantly, a little bit about the amazing women I have been fortunate enough to meet and become friends with because of the program. Most of us began this journey in February, 2020. On the first day, we were asked to share our life journey. Similarly, this year, when the program we started, we were asked to share our one year in COVID journey. And for me, while well, I learned on the most basic level that people do not all think and process the same way. And as a leader, you need to be able to adapt to others' communication and personality styles in order to be successful. 
Without the Jennifers of the world and their need for fact-based evidence and logic, where would we be? We need diversity on all levels, including personality types. For me, understanding to value all types of personalities and how I, as a judging extrovert, can sometimes be a little overwhelming to a feelings introvert has already helped me immensely in my own leadership position. As Aisha says, leadership is an ongoing learning process. Because of this program, Janice got herself a mentor. Rania is striving to take time for herself, learning about what she values and advocating for herself. And Benet has realized that while you can talk yourself out of anything, that she's going to try and do the opposite instead. All of these things we have learned from this program, the journeys we have been through because of this program will have a lifetime impact on all of us. I want to that thank each and every one of the women I have met because of this program and Kathleen and Towson for this unique opportunity. I truly hope to continue our sisterhood and friendship for years to come. Thank you. Hi, I'm Heather Sorensen, and I'm a member of the Wednesday afternoon group in this year's cohort. Many of us started in the 2020 cohort, and when the program paused after session two, we thought for sure we'd be back together soon. The excitement that built as Kathleen and our David told us of the new format launch for 2021 was something we all needed. The pure joy evident as we joined our first Zoom session together was nearly palpable. We saw new faces along with those we missed. We started sending chat messages of love and chasing rainbows together that very afternoon. We threw ourselves in and agreed to be uncomfortable together while, we op while open to tremendous growth and possibility. Sometimes to move up, you have to move out. We moved out on this fresh adventure with our fearless leader, her specifically chosen background fabrics and carefully crafted plans. And as promised at the start of the journey, we've each been immeasurably changed. Kathleen believes we have all the tools we need already inside us. And I believe we are well on our way to knowing ourselves as leaders grounded in our values, who speak and act from places of power in our knowledge. We are committed to leading with empathy and ensuring our daily deeds align with our values as we strive to build trust in others and empower them to succeed. We have learned to see more value in ourselves, each other, and those around us. We have held ourselves and each other accountable as well as cared for ourselves and each other while we learned from Kathleen and myriad other inspiring leaders along the way. A few bits that should bring smiles to my classmates include outside, but the cicadas. I hope they keep me. If you don't want it quoted, don't say it. If you don't want to stay a worker bee, stop being a worker bee. That is next level creative mothering right there. Silence is powerful. Self-care is part of your job. In summary, we are grounded, confident, fearless women who have learned to be ourselves intentionally, but now we're just a bit better at it. We are ready. Bring on the storms. We are chasing rainbows, and today is day one. Thank you, Sarah and Heather. We really enjoyed that. And now I'm here to introduce Dr. Nancy Grasmick, program ambassador for our leadership program. She, from the beginning of the program, has been a force for good. As a role model of a determined, committed, successful leader who has innovated in education and the administration of education, she is a woman who speaks her truth and lives her values, a guiding light for each of us. And we really appreciate the time that she spends with us, joining us at each first session to give a charge to our incoming class to know thyself, embrace leadership, and keep moving through all challenges. Dr. Grasmick, we welcome you. Congratulations to all of our graduates from the Professional Leadership program for women here at Towson University. We're so proud of you. And we're so proud of the program, those who've offered it, those who've participated. We began this program in 2015. And in a short time, we have increased the number of participants by 300%. I think that speaks to the value of what's offered. And what is very exciting 
is that there has been a 66% increase in the number of participants who have been promoted. And just think of what that means, what they've taken to the positions where they have been promoted and the kind of leadership they're providing based on their experience in matriculating through this program. I'm very excited about what's been brought to the program, what's been taken from the program, and what has spawned a new idea. And that is a leadership institute that will be outward facing, but certainly under the banner of Towson University. It will be a program that will hopefully engage in particularly the Baltimore metropolitan area, people who are interested in different dimensions of leadership from coaching to interacting with other peers who are interested in promotion, et cetera. So we're excited about July when that institute will be launched, but we wanna thank you because all of you have contributed ideas and have demonstrated that leadership is important in your portfolio as you think about your future. So congratulations to each and every one of you. And now we'd like to hear the individual names. Maknor Ahmed, Director of Student Recruitment and Engagement at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Laura Banke, Vice President of Conservation Programs at the National Aquarium. Christine Barnabic, Academic Service Manager, University of Maryland School of Medicine. Paige Boskakis, Regional Sales Manager for Opeachy Family Distributing. Michelle Brandenburg, Senior Investment Advisor, PNC Institutional Advisory Solutions. Chris Butcher, Director of Care Management and Social Work, Levendale Geriatric Hospital, part of LifeBridge Health. Jacqueline Caldwell, Community Leader Extraordinaire and Event Coordinator at Annie E. Casey Foundation. Emily Carroll, Commercial Division Operations Manager for RCMD. Melissa Court, Managing Director and Head of Technology and Planning for Franklin Templeton. Marie Claire Davis, Director, AHC, Greater Baltimore. Nicole Dobbs, Director of Training and Development for the Maryland Transit Administration. Amy Edelman, Assistant Benefits Manager, the Whiting Turner Contracting Company. Benet Edwards, Grants Manager, Maryland Higher Education Commission. Vanessa Aluma, Vice President, T. Rowe Price Associates. Bonnie Gettle, Technical Lead Supervisor, Erickson Living. Janice Godson Burnett, Senior Consultant, Wise Consulting. Regina Haynes, Director of Education and Training for Humphrey Management. Jeannie Embriali, Director of Office of Enterprise Applications, Baltimore County Public Schools. Kate Kennedy, Director of Internal Audit, LifeBridge Health. Andrea Lake, Senior Originator, Constellation. Shantia Lindsay, Statewide Community Services Coordinator for the Maryland Department of Juvenile Services. Shanae McLean, Director of Nursing for Long-Term Care and Subacute Care at the Levendale Hebrew Geriatric Center, LifeBridge Health. Ashley Meyer, Grants Coordinator, Office of Baltimore County Executive, John Olicheski, Jr. Sarah Mickey, Deputy Director, Baltimore Jewish Council. Shalu Mattal, Technical Lead Supervisor, Erickson Living. Renee Murphy, Director of Events and Experiences, Sagamore Spirit Distillery. Lena Neville, Principal and Director of Private Wealth Management, BFG Financial Advisors. Elizabeth Owens, Project Manager, Johns Hopkins Health System. Sierra Parks, Human Relations Manager, Curio Wellness. Judy Poey, Health Program Officer, United Way of Central Maryland. Stacy Rebert, Director of Marketing and Corporate Communications, Harford Mutual. Amy Rubino, 
Product Manager, Care First. Aaron Runyon, Global Retail Program Management Office, Under Armour. Tina Schmidt, Director of Talent Acquisition and Retention for Kennedy Krieger. Aisha Scott, Manager, Learning and Organizational Development, MeQ Credit Union. Ronnie Selfani, Vice President, T. Rowe Price. Monica Schuler marrow Human Resources Strategic Business Partner, Johns Hopkins University. Sharice Singleton, Office Manager, University of Maryland at Baltimore. April Smith, Assistant Director of Residence Life, Towson University. Heather Sorensen, Director of Events and Operations, College of Fine Arts, Towson University. Dion Spencer, Director at Franklin Templeton. Sharati Sukumaran, Senior Risk Analyst, Exelon. Jennifer Ventimiglia, Senior Quantitative Analyst, Constellation. Tiffany Wandy, Executive Director of Clinically Integrated Network, LifeBridge Health. Reverend Tamara Wilson, Pastor, New Season, New Day Church. Congratulations to each of you. I hope you will proudly hang your certificate in your office and add this program to your LinkedIn profile for all to see. And it's my great pleasure at this moment to officially welcome you to the alumni of the Professional Leadership Program for Women at Towson University. At this very moment, that group has grown from 111 amazing women to 156 amazing women, and you are part of it. I know you have already met many of the alumni through our Lunch with Leaders um, events, through our networking events, through a LinkedIn group posts, and also some of you through a direct connection that grew out of our coaching sessions together. And I really look forward to you continuing to meet other women in the alumni network and finding ways to support each other as you continue your professional leadership journeys and your professional leadership choices. And so with that, we have concluded our ceremony for this evening. I thank everyone who has participated in watching and in celebrating with the um, alumni that they know. And I encourage everyone to continue to support the growth of women's leadership in this region. And I wish each of you a good evening.